Nobody wants to get united. Like, what we gotta do is meet everybody in the 149th Street at the bench. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Today I have another tutorial video for you guys where we're going to talk about negative space management in graffiti. So we're going to be talking about what it is and how it works. But before we do, just know today's video is part of the tutorial series and we have a bunch of videos in this playlist. Be sure to watch it all in order to get all of the information you need to know about graffiti. We cover all of the fundamentals as well as some basic techniques. So negative space management, what exactly is that? Well, it's pretty self-explanatory, it's in the name. It is the management of all the negative space in your graffiti. Whether you're doing Doing hand styles, throw ups, or pieces, you have negative space management to worry about. Now, for those of you guys who might have studied like other font based art forms like calligraphy, you might be saying to yourselves, John, isn't negative space management just kerning? Kerning, of course, referring to the spacing between two letters. And the answer is no. Kerning and negative space management are two different things. Negative space management is a lot more broad than that because graffiti has a lot of things going on. So, with negative space management, you're not only managing the negative space between two individual letters similar to kerning, but you're also managing the negative space within a single letter. For example, your open and closed counters, as well as your exterior details and extensions. All of these things create negative space. And it's up to you, the graffiti artist, to balance that out. Keyword there, balance. You gotta keep it balanced. Now an open counter is a portion of negative space from a letter that is not fully enclosed. A closed counter is a fully enclosed bit of negative space within a letter. You see, the things you don't draw are just as important as the things you do draw. Bad negative space management can make a letter look as if it's floating off. It can make a side of your name look weak. It can make one side of the name also look like it weighs a lot more. Or it can even draw a lot of attention to a specific area. However, negative space can also really balance out a piece. It can create for some interesting dynamics and it can even draw viewers attention to something that you want them to look at. So just as much as it is good, it is bad. But this is a very case by case basis that you are going to have to be able to judge for yourself. Ooh, what is that? I, why do I have an alarm at 11 a.m.? I wake up at 6 in the morning every single day. You think I got these bags under my eyes for no reason? I got a coach in Versace right here, man. Now, this fundamental negative space management is actually responsible for throw-ups. It's completely responsible for throw-ups because throw-ups were created as a means of getting your name up as quickly as possible, as large as possible. And how did they do that? They did it by getting rid of all negative space possible. So what you ended up with was letters being positioned really closely together. This eliminating all negative space between two individual letters. Then they went ahead and took your closed counters and pretty much got rid of them entirely by representing them with just a single line, a symbol, or a very tiny negative space. And then your open counters, pretty much the same thing happened. Also, I forgot to mention, this is also why graffiti artists did rounder letters because rounder things are faster to do than doing angles everywhere. And it just so happens that it's easier to fill negative space if you're doing rounder lines. Negative space becomes an issue once you begin to add style. And it doesn't have to be wild style, it could be little tiny things, right? Maybe this letter's a little bit bigger, this next letter's a little bit smaller, and the third letter is a little bit taller once again. What happens here is you create a little bit of a cup, we'll call it, or pocket. This isn't always a bad thing though, sometimes pockets can be good. So in order to fix negative space, sometimes you can put in exterior detail, things like chips, things like key lines, these are great ways to fill up negative space. Or sometimes it might be better to change the structure. Other great ways to fix negative space problems is 3D and drop shadow. If you know you're gonna have a lot of negative space on a specific letter, why not take the drop shadow or 3D and put it going in that direction to fill some some of the negative space. From here you can go ahead and add once again key lines and chips in order to further fill it in. Once again this is very much one of those fundamentals that interacts heavily and is very dependent on the other fundamentals and is very situation based. So let's check out this Mad C piece as our first example. Notice on the top left of her M she has a serif that comes over to the left. On the bottom left of her M she has a serif that comes over to the right. Now this brings up the topic of the pocket we talked about early in the video. As you can see, if we draw a line from here to here, she has a pocket of negative space that she has to now fill in. And how does she do that? Throws in some extensions. Not to mention she also throws in some exterior details, which would be in this case the key line with the bubbles. If we take a look at the same exact piece on the right hand side, she has the top of the C, she has the bottom right of the C, this creates a pocket from here to here. And what does she do? Another extension. Coincidence? I think not. Now Rhyme is somebody I like a lot because he has an unusual unorthodox style that uses a lot of negative space which you don't really see a lot of in graffiti and I actually like it for that reason if you notice in a lot of rhymes styles he'll actually take his drop shadow and really make it go really far away from his letters this helps 
a bunch to fill in a lot of negative space. So in this piece right here we have his letter R, and there's a tremendous amount of space between his R and his I, and what does he do? He fills it in with a ton of details. He's got a lot of exterior details with these characters over here, and then he's got his key line with the blue bubbles filling in a lot of that space as well. And then he even has extensions in order to bridge the gap from the I to the M. And now if we take a look at this soft list piece, he's got pretty much no negative space on these letters at all whatsoever, but he does have it on the O. But notice how the O structure is really thin. This creates a ton of negative space within the O. There's no way he can keep all that negative space, so he chooses to fill it in with a star. This limits the amount of negative space, gives him a little bit, but now he has to include negative space somewhere else. And he does this a little bit on the L, which is honestly not that much at all, so we're not gonna even consider that, but he does include quite a bit on his E. Nowhere near as much as the O, so the O still stands out a lot. Remember when I talked about negative space bringing attention to a specific letter? That's what we're seeing right here. When you guys are doing graffiti, don't overthink this. Overthinking this topic is more so for the advanced graffiti artists. This is not something you're going to really be conceptualizing for when it comes to basic graffiti because with basic graffiti your negative space management is going to be dictated by the letter structures predominantly and if you're doing simple straight letters or print font hand styles your letter structures should just be that they should just be basic print font letter structures which means your negative space management isn't really going to be altered all that much anyway ladies and gentlemen that brings us to the end of today's video if you enjoyed it be sure to give the video a like and feel free to comment down below i'm really active in the comments if you have any questions feel free to ask them i'll do my best to get back to you as well also, if you're watching this series, I assume you want to learn more about graffiti, so be sure to check out the tutorial playlist. We have a crazy amount of information in here. It goes over everything you need to know about this art form. For those of you guys who are new here, welcome. We do weekly art videos, typically revolving around informational graffiti videos. So if you don't want to miss out on this sort of thing, feel free to subscribe. Turn on notifications as well because YouTube is abysmal at pushing out notifications. And we paint stuff like this over on my Twitch. I got all my social media in the description down below. Be sure to go ahead and give me a follow. Anyway, I hope to see you guys in the next one, but until then, peace.